In this video, I will show you how to evaluate definite integrals when you are either given the graph or if you are given certain specific values of other definite integrals. So take a close look at this definite integral right here. It makes sense that uh, since a definite integral is just the area under the curve from the lower limit to the upper limit, then uh, the integral from negative 1 to positive 1, let me write this down as I say it. So the integral from negative 1 to positive 1 should equal the integral from negative 1 to 0 plus the integral from 0 to 1. So what do we already know? We know that the integral from negative 1 to 1 is 0. So we have 0 equals. The integral from negative 1 to 0, this is the one that we are trying to find. So maybe I'll just put a question mark right here. And then the integral from 0 to 1 we're given that as well. That's 5. Okay, um, so if 0 is equal to something plus 5, then that something must be negative 5. Uh, I guess you could do a little bit of algebra here if you really wanted to and subtract 5 from both sides. But either way, you're going to come up with negative 5. All right, let's do something similar for part B. So we have uh, the integral from 0 to 1. Okay, we already know that is 5. So we have 5 minus. And then they mention the integral from negative 1 to 0. Well, guess, guess what? That's what we just found in part A. So we know this is negative 5. So that gives us 5 minus negative 5, which is 10. All right, what about part C? Well, I see this uh, constant of 3 on the inside. We can take that constant and put it in the front. So this will equal 3 times the integral from negative 1 to positive 1 of f of x. And we are told that the integral from negative 1 to positive 1 is 0. So that means we really have 3 times 0, which of course is 0. What about part D? I see this constant multiple in here. Um, let's go ahead and bring this 3 out into the front. So this will be 3 times the integral from 0 to 1. So what do we know about the integral from 0 to 1? Well, that's 5. So this will just be 3 times 5, which is 15. All right, let's move on to graphs. So remember that uh, the constant, um, a definite integral is just going to be the area under the curve, the area between the curve and the x-axis. Keep in mind that if you are looking at an area that is above the x-axis, that will be positive. So for example, this trapezoid is going to be some type of a positive area. On the other hand, an area that is below the x-axis is going to be counted as negative. So this triangle right here will be a negative area. All right, so this negative sign in the front of this one is like a, uh, it's like a negative one. So before we even get started, let's just take that negative and put it out in the front. So we have negative integral from 0 
to 1 of this function f of x. Well, 0 to 1 is just this teeny tiny little area. Let me highlight it for you. Okay, from 0 to 1, we're just talking about this little area right here. So remember, this will be negative because it's below the x-axis. And we see this is just half of a square. So um, obviously, this is going to be negative 1 half. So what we have is uh, we have the negative sign in front that we had from the beginning. And now this integral is negative 1 half. So that means we have positive 1 half for the answer. All right. Next, we want the integral um, from 3 to 4 of 3 times f of x. Whenever I see that constant, I'm going to always put that in the front. So this will be 3 times the integral from 3 to 4 of f of x. So we'll just keep that 3 kind of hanging around. Now let's find the integral from 3 to 4. Well, here is 3 and here is 4. So we are just talking about this rectangle. It is above the x-axis, so this will be considered a positive area. Base times height, this is 1 times 2. Um, so this is an area of positive 2. We already had the 3 in the front, so this will just be 3 times 2, which is an area of 6. All right, next we have the area, uh, well, the integral from 0 to 7. Okay, so 0 to 7. So we're going to go from 0 to here. Let's break this down into parts. So our first little triangle here, we already know, is going to be negative 1 half. In fact, I think I'll highlight all of the negative areas while I have my blue highlighter out. All right, so we have um, a negative area here, and we have a negative area here. Each of those will be negative 1 half. So I have negative 1 half at the beginning, and I have negative 1 half at the end. What about in the middle? In the middle, we have this trapezoid happening. All right, let me just highlight the rest of the way there. Okay, so here's our trapezoid. And we know the formula for the area of a trapezoid is 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times height. Well, base 1 is, uh, I'm going to look at the top here, and that's 1. And then base 2 down here at the bottom uh, has a width of 5 times the height, which is 2. So that's the area of a trapezoid. So again, for this trapezoid, I was just using the formula that the area is 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. So if you put this all together, that should be um, the total area from 0 to 7. Let's go ahead and evaluate this part. Well, 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. And then half of 12 is 6. So we end up with a negative 1 half plus 6 minus 1 half. Well, negative a half and a negative a half is negative 1. So this is 6 minus 1, which is 5. So this is going to be 5. Let's take a look at the net area from 5 to 11. 
So we're going to do the net area from here to here. I'm going to view this as three triangles, two with positive area and one with negative area. The first triangle is just area one half, positive one half. For the second triangle, this is negative area, so I'm going to go ahead and put a minus here. Of course, the formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height. The base of this triangle, one, two, three, four, and the height is two. And then the third triangle, again, positive one half. Well, the one half in the front and the one half at the end make one. And then here we have four times two is eight, and half of that is four. And one minus four is negative three. So that's the net area from five to 11. What about the net area from zero to 11? From zero to 11, it's really this entire graph. So we've got uh, three triangles and a trapezoid. You can see in blue the negative areas, and I've highlighted the positive areas in yellow. So from left to right, first we have this little blue triangle that has an area of negative one half. Next, we have this uh, yellow trapezoid, and uh, this will be a positive area. The area of the trapezoid, again, is one half uh, base one plus base two. Uh, so that was going to be one plus five times the height, which was two. And then here comes the blue triangle. So this is a negative area. And this is one half base times height. So this is one half uh, four times two. And then the uh, positive yellow triangle at the end is a positive one half. The negative one half at the beginning and the positive one half at the end cancel each other out, so I will disregard those. Um, here from the trapezoid, we had six times two is 12, and half of that is six. And then we had a triangle here, uh, four times two is eight, and half of that is four. So that's just going to be six minus four, which gives us a net area of two. So what about the net area from four to 10? So I've highlighted the net area from four to 10. We have a positive yellow triangle and this negative blue triangle. So first, uh, the positive triangle has an area of uh, one half base times height. The base and the height are both two. And then I'm going to subtract for the blue triangle and uh, one half base times height. The base is four and the height is two. And then two times two is four half of that is two. Two times four is eight, half of that is four. Two minus four gives us a net area of negative two.